And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the incumbent, Mayor Ted Gatzis. All right, the order of the candidates opening and closing remarks was determined earlier with a coin toss. Each candidate will have two minutes, and with that coin toss, we begin with Joyce Craig. Thank you. I'd like to thank Mike and the Chamber for hosting this morning, Adam for moderating, uh, Mayor Gatsis for participating, and for all of you for being here this morning. On November 7th, Manchester residents have an important decision to make. We can continue going down the same road that we've been on for the last eight years, or we can change direction and build a stronger Manchester. I'm running for mayor because I love this city, and I know we can and must do better to make sure it's a place that people want to live, work, and raise their families. Manchester has tremendous potential, but we also have some serious challenges. Challenges that we talked about here two years ago. Challenges that haven't gotten better over the last two years, and challenges that we cannot ignore anymore. We have struggling schools. Uh, only. Uh, 28 percent of our third graders in Manchester public schools are reading at grade level. We're facing a serious opioid crisis in our city where we saw an increase in overdoses over the last over the last three months this summer and the most overdoses ever in September with 147 overdoses. And we've seen consistent mismanagement come out of the mayor's office. Specifically under his leadership we saw the sending towns of Auburn, Candy and Hooks that leave our school district district, and along with that, over $15 million, which has caused a significant financial strain in our city and in our school district. I know we can do better. I've put together a comprehensive plan that addresses things like transparency, city government, uh, the opioid uh, issue in crime, education, economic development. I've presented specific details and ideas on how we can move Manchester forward. Today, more than ever, we need a mayor who has the energy, vision, and management skills to address the challenges facing Manchester residents and build a stronger Manchester. That's why I'm running for mayor, and I look forward to the discussion today. Thank you. Mayor Gatsis, your opening remarks. Thank you very much. I want to thank the chamber for putting on this event, and certainly thanking everybody for being in the room with us this morning. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I want to thank the voters of Manchester for allowing me the privilege of being their mayor, because it's certainly a wonderful, wonderful job. I grew up in the city of Manchester, and I've lived here all my life. I grew up on a pig farm in South Manchester that in 1959 the highway took it, and we moved to Ward 2, where my wife Cassandra and I still live, and my mother lives in the house that I grew up with, grew up in as a child. I was a graduate of Manchester Central High School, Smith Road School, and the University of New Hampshire. The opportunities that I had at school made me the person that I am today. I have to thank my teachers, the folks that were around me for the wonderful successes that I've seen in my life, and it was all because of them. We have a great city. I believe in this city, and the reason why I'm running for mayor is I love this city and I believe in it. I think the people of Manchester should understand that uh, their tax dollars are better spent, left in their wallet, rather than spent on frivolous things that we have here in the city. So I can tell you that as we move forward, you will hear a debate this morning about different things. You will see a stark difference between myself and my opponent. I will tell you why this city is great and never put it down, because that's what I believe a, mancha, a mayor should do when they represent the community, or if you're running for that position. I put out a 12-point plan keep 12 wards in Manchester together and make it a stronger, stronger Manchester together. And I can tell you that the things that we're going to talk about are very relevant. And we'll hear about management styles and mismanagements and things that we can do in the city of Manchester. Not everything is perfect. We can improve, but the city is in a great place right now and we must continue that momentum. All right, let's begin with our questions, and we'll start uh, with the first question going to Mayor Gatzis. On the opioid epidemic, public safety and the opioid, opioid epidemic is an issue that continues to challenge the community, state, and many parts of the country. What local action steps do you think are important to effectively address the ongoing opioid crisis? 
Thank you for the question. I can tell you that the safe station program that we've put into effect is one of the pro most unbelievable programs that anybody could bring forward. I thank Chris Hickey for bringing it to me and putting it in Manchester. He came to me and told me it was going to take us six to 18 months to put in place. I told him he had three weeks to get it in place because people were dying. It is now a nationally recognized program that communities throughout this country are coming in to see. I can tell you the deaths year over year are down 27%. If it wasn't for Safe Station, it wouldn't be that easy to talk about the deaths that we have in this city. 2,700 people have gone to Safe Station. The next step we must take is to find safe housing for those folks that are in drug court and at Serenity Place and other places that are getting their, their problems taken care of, but when they go home at night, they don't have a place to go to that's safe. So I can tell you we will continue to work on this, and we must make sure that the education of our students is there in the forefront. Ms. Craig, your uh, plan to address the opioid crisis. Thank you. Uh, one of the most critical things that I've done running for office is gone on ride-alongs with our police and fire department. That has provided me an opportunity to see firsthand the challenges that our community is facing and also firsthand what our public uh, safety officials are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. That's something that Mayor Gatsis has said he's not interested in doing. I view the mayor of Manchester as being the CEO of a company, and the CEO of a company needs to understand from the bottom up how this company is working, and the current mayor is not willing to do that, and I think that's tragic. One of the things that I uh, observed when I was on a ride-along was that police and fire specifically pointed out uh, a handful of buildings in our city, whether they were vacant or um, dilapidated, but there were problem properties in our city, so I was able to incorporate, incorporate that in plans um, to address this epidemic in our city. I think education, early education is critical, and I think the mayor of Manchester has a tremendous opportunity to bring the, the prevention providers in our city together, and we're not doing that right now, and we need to do a better job of that so we're providing the critical services to the people that need it the most. Mayor Gatsis, 30 seconds to respond. I can tell you that people think that ride-alongs are important. What I think is important is to go to third alarm fires. I've been to quite a few fires when it's been a third alarm and watch the firefighters work real hard to save property and lives. I was at that Wilson Street fire when a family of four was tragically taken from us. I've been to the hospital when police officers have been shot in the line of duty. So I go there and support the men and women of the police department and the fire department when it's most critical. That's what's most important. Thank you. Um, the question was about how we would address the opioid epidemic, and what you just heard from Mayor Gatzis is what any mayor of the city would do, I would hope. We would go to a fire, we would go to the hospital, we support our public safety officials. But when we have the opportunity to develop plans on how to best address the issues in our city, we, as a mayor, need to understand what's going on in our city, and the best way to do that is to go on a ride along so you see firsthand, again, what the citizens of our city are suffering with, and what the public safety officials are dealing with on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour basis. What's more important is to hear what the families have to deal with day-to-day. -day. And I have mothers and fathers that call me every single day in my office to tell me that they have a child that's addicted, and can I help them? I just had a provider yesterday call me to see if we couldn't get somebody some help immediately. So every day I hear those, and I have a letter right next to me every day from Reagan a young man that sent me a letter that said I saved his life because we got him into treatment. He came back six months ago and gave me a hug because I saved his life. So I understand how difficult this situation is, and every day I deal with it. Thank you. You know, again, uh, we all here and uh, from families and family members and community people who are suffering with this uh, addiction. Um, I put on my blazer today and I have a card from a funeral that I went to of a friend's son. So this is something that is affecting everyone in our community. We all know that. But the question is, as mayor, how are you going to best address this? And we don't need a mayor who is deferring the question and talking about how he has been affected by it or pe what people are saying. But how are we going to do this? He's had eight years to do this. We have very little education for students in our schools. We have very little funding from the state. We have uh, an epidemic that is increasing month to month. 
And we have a mayor who refuses to get down into the trenches and really understand what's going on here. Uh, you know, that's the type of mayor that I would be. I want to work with the people and work with the officials who have the capacity to make the changes that we need to do in Manchester so we positively affect this epidemic in Manchester. All right, certainly a major issue and a lot of other topics to touch on, as you mentioned there. Let's move to a question about vision, and this will go to Joyce Craig. As mayor, the community looks to you to set the vision for our future. Let's jump ahead to 2020. What do you see Manchester looking like in 2020? It's a great question. Um, 2020, I would love to see Manchester be the place that people look to for an absolute quality education. People are moving here to put their kids in our public schools, where we have the strength of our universities and colleges we're known for, where there's collaboration in our community, a vibrant downtown with retail, restaurants, and living opportunities, a mill yard that's bustling with technology and entrepreneurs and um, businesses that are thriving. In order to do that, we also have to address the parking issue there. So we would have to address parking. And then moving forward to the possibility of having rail come into Manchester and having international flights at our airport. Um, you know, the limits are, are, we are limitless in terms of what we can do as long as we have a mayor who's open to working with people and collaborating and doesn't have a closed mind. Mr. Mayor, your well, I vision. can tell you that all the things I just heard are things that are already happening in the city of Manchester. The vibrancy downtown on Elm Street is incredible. The milliard is booming. The airport is starting to pick up again. And certainly there are other things throughout this city that are occurring. We've uh, changed the infrastructure of the city by investing in our roads and our parks so that folks can enjoy the, the things that we have in this great city. So I can tell you that in 2020, the education in this great city because of what's changing educationally, thanks to Bob Baines for the Steam Ahead program that we started at West together. I can tell you that great things are happening. When you have principal of the year, teacher of the year, and school of the year, that means great things are happening in the community. You go to Parker Varney, you see an innovative idea of how to teach. You see students that are excited. 48 students in a classroom with two teachers, and then they break down into three groups of three, and they work on projects together. A different way of educating our students. Those are the great things that are happening in our city, and they will continue to happen. You know, the Milliard has Army coming in, and that's going to change the complexion once again of our great Milliard. Thank you. Sure. Um, we do have good things happening in Manchester. I didn't um, say that we didn't. But I think we can always do better. And we can have a mayor who has vision, who will work with the business community and the residents in our city to move our city forward and always strive for better. That's not happening today. You know, I'm a graduate of Manchester Public Schools. My kids are there right now. I believe in the public schools, and I believe it's critical that we address issues in those schools so that we have families that want to live in Manchester and businesses that want to come here. Um, I had a conversation with uh, Paula Blank just last night, one of the largest employers in Manchester, and he specifically said to me, he uh, is hiring people left and right constantly. When he hires someone who has kids, they refuse to move to Manchester. The mayor of Manchester has to acknowledge that that's happening today and make the changes necessary so we can uh, make the, the adjustments and uh, help our public schools. Well, there's a subdivision that's going up with four bedroom houses right at the end of North Elm Street and off of River Road. I can tell you, talking to the developer there, not that he can take points of interest, but he's got a list of 40 people that have shown interest in those houses. They range between five hundred and seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars So I can tell you there's an interest in the city of Manchester, and great things are happening here. That's what's attracting people here. When you have the Job Corps that just opened up with the help of Senator Shaheen and Senator Ayotte, and I worked with both of those to make sure it happened, good things are happening in the city for all students. Let's move to economic development. When we talk about the idea of limitless potential, certainly Dean Kamen's Army Initiative has the kind of potential to be a transformative economic engine for Manchester. Mr. Mayor, what specific steps will you take to make sure the city seizes this opportunity fully? Well, there's no question that uh, the planning department is implementing a program right now that will give developers an on-time, accurate basis of where their projects are. So there's not going to be a wondering when the project is going to be completed or how they're going to do it. There's a program right now in the next few months that will be brought forward. I can tell you that the Army project is going to rejuvenate the Milliard. Right now, the Milliard is uh, 
known, it was known as a textile industry. Now it's moved to what are we doing with parking and how do we make sure that people come down. And when you talk to folks, the most important thing about the mill yard is its vibrancy. People are excited about being there. They're excited about starting their businesses. And we already have businesses from other states that want to make sure and they get positioned here in the city so that they can work with uh, Dean Kamen's project moving forward. So it's an exciting time here in the city. And we're going to make sure that every developer has an opportunity to come to Manchester, get their projects done on time and under budget. Ms. Craig, as mayor, how do you fully capture the potential that Army could bring. Thank you. Um, in conversations that I've had with Dean Kamen and uh, Mike DeSell at UNH Manchester, there's a partnership there. Um, you know, we, the state, I uh, think it's great that we're going after the possibility of having, having Amazon in New Hampshire, uh, in Londonderry. We have an opportunity right in our backyard in Manchester where there's a new industry that is, would be, you know, th throughout the world, it, brand new, that we can help build in our city. Um, so what I have suggested is, um, and from my conversations with those two people, we need to help them in terms of bringing businesses in Manchester. There's new legislation in Concord that allows for tax relief for new commercial and manufacturing uh, companies. Um, I would suggest that Manchester uh, Board of Mayor and Aldermen look to that and approve that. Uh, the mayor hasn't suggested that coming forward. Um, we you know, the mayor mentioned um, the planning department. I'm not sure why it's taken eight years to make the changes. I do constantly hear from developers that there are issues. We should have made those changes years ago, um, and we should continue doing that. The other thing that I hear consistently is that we need quality education because people that want to come here and move their businesses here are looking at statistics online, and education for their kids is critical. So it comes right back down to education. Thank you. I tried to make those changes uh, to get that software in place four years ago, but the board removed it from the budget. So this two years ago, or last year, we left it in the budget, and we're moving it forward. I think it's an exciting time, and there's no question that the vibrancy that's happening, there are over 200 new apartments that have come downtown, and Elm Street is absolutely a buzz. In conversations that I've had with chamber men members and developers, there's no need for an investment in software to make these changes. There are some common sense changes that we can make to planning and zoning uh, rules um, that haven't been done yet, and that's one of the things that I would look to. Um, we do need to be more friendly as a community and as a city um, to uh, people that want to come to Manchester and uh, work with them and partner with them. And we need a mayor in Manchester who will partner with um, the businesses and go out and try to uh, bring more businesses into Manchester. Someone who understands the, um, the opportunities in our city and can sell those. And certainly from a broader perspective, helping businesses grow and attracting new companies to the Queen City is of course a top priority of the Chamber and benefits the community by creating new jobs and tax revenue. As Mayor Ms. Craig, what would be your economic development plan and top priorities? So, I mean, we just talked a little bit about it. Um, to me, the Army project is one of the biggest things that we can do in Manchester and help them bring in new companies, which would bring in new jobs. We also need to focus on education and make sure that the students that are graduating from Manchester Public High School are exposed to the course offerings, which they're not right now, where the jobs are going to be in Manchester, and also that they have the curriculum in place that allows them to uh, be accepted into programs such as UNH Manchester, because there's this great partnership there. Um, you know, I also believe that um, the mayor of Manchester and City Hall should be working more closely with the chamber and with business leaders in our city. And I would suggest that we put together a coalition um, to talk about what we want in our city, how we can bring businesses here, um, and how we can do that together. Uh, we have the 10-year plan coming up, um, and that's a great opportunity for the mayor of the city and the community to really identify what we want to see, how we want to do that, and any zoning we need to change. And Mr. Mayor, take us beyond downtown in the mill yard. What's the plan for the whole city? Well, I can tell you that the most exciting thing that I've seen in people that come to visit this community is making students uh, that are maybe not going to college, because not everybody's going to college, and MST opens that door for an awful lot of students. There was a contingency from Brazil in just the other day, and they were at MST. They couldn't believe that students at MST were getting an education. It's a full four-year high school, the only one in the state of New Hampshire that I brought forward with Dr. Brennan. 
And those students have an opportunity to become plumbers, electricians, beautician, culinary arts, and they can move forward. That's what people are looking for, alternative ways to be educated. Those students are thriving. At West High School is a STEAM Ahead program. I went out and raised $90,000 so that those kids could get dual credits, college credits and high school credits going forward. There are students that are taking advantage of that today. When we hear the high cost of college, you can go into a STEAM Ahead at West and get a full year's education at zero cost. That's just unbelievable. And it's an opportunity for every student. We've already shifted a little bit towards Can education I, here. Sorry, I, let's move it along toward, towards education. We're, we just need to focus this time on the idea of what is the number one challenge facing the school district right now. And Mr. Mayor, this question goes to you. Well, the number one challenge is, is you know, that we talk about the negatives of the schools, and I won't do that. I think we have great schools, we have great teachers, and we have great students. We've got to make more educational opportunities available to them. As I said, STEAM Ahead is a great program. Three years ago, we partnered up with Dean Kamen, and he brought Junior Steam Ahead to every elementary school in the city of Manchester. Every fourth grader gets a chance to go to the Sea Science Museum at no cost. Dean Kamen pays for that, and they get the robotics competition during the school day, once a week, in their classroom. The excitement that these students have is incredible. I can tell you that the times in Manchester for education are changing. I talked about Parker Varney. We are very successful at having Christine Brennan, who is the principal at uh, Beach Street School, go to Concord and be the assistant commissioner there. That tells you that great things are happening at Beach Street School, and they're trying to bring those things to Concord so that the entire state can see what's, what's happening right here in the city of Manchester. Ms. Craig, what is the number one issue facing the school district? Thank you. Uh as I mentioned earlier, I am a proud graduate of Manchester Public Schools. I have two children who graduated from Central, and my youngest daughter is an eighth grader at Hillside. So I believe in the power of Manchester Public Schools and the hard work that our teachers are doing right now in our schools. But we have to acknowledge um, some issues that we have in order to correct them. Um, as I stated earlier, only 28% of third graders right now are reading at grade level. In 2009, when Mayor Gatzis took office, 64% of kids were reading at grade level. We've seen a significant decline in literacy. To me, that's one of the number one issues that we need to address. Why are kids not reading at grade level? Um, you know, from the conversations that I've had with teachers and with administrators, we have very little professional development in our schools. And we, have, uh, we do not have a standard remedial reading program in elementary schools. We need to address this issue because we also have high schools that have some of the highest dropout rates. So we are seeing our kids be very frustrated and then drop out. And to me, literacy is a key component to ensuring that when kids are in our schools, they will be successful um, upon graduation. There you go again, Joyce, just telling the half-truths. Why are the students not reading at grade level? Because we implemented smarter balanced testing. The smart and balanced testing is being taken away this year by the commissioner. So we'll be testing our students in a different way. She doesn't tell you that most every school district in the state had their numbers drop. So it's not just Manchester. It's throughout the state of New Hampshire. Bedford went down 10%. So again, it's about the testing and how we get better testing in the state of New Hampshire so we understand what that structure is for our students. That's what's most important. I absolutely disagree with the mayor here. We are not providing the services to our children in Manchester public schools, period. We've heard that kids in elementary school don't have math books. Uh, my daughter, who is an eighth grader at Hillside, doesn't have a math book that she can bring home. We talk about how we want to encourage parent participation. How are we going to do that if we don't have a book to help our children with? We have larger class sizes, and we need to face the facts here. We can't ignore what's happening. Every community in Manchester has the, st the same standards in terms of what they're looking for. And when people are looking to Manchester, they're looking at these results. So if the mayor of Manchester doesn't want to acknowledge them, that's his prerogative. But we as a community have to rally around how do we make sure our kids, every child in Manchester is succeeding. And that's what I pledge I will do.
we'll stay with this idea of education and the debate becoming about perception versus reality. Ms. Craig, how do you balance uh, promoting Manchester schools while also addressing what is wrong? Yeah, I mean, there are great things happening in our schools, and they're little pockets. And I think we need to do a better job of shared learnings. And if we have data that suggests that those programs are doing well, we need to bring those into other schools. MST, I agree with Mayor Gatsis, it's a great program. Why aren't we putting that in West High School if it's so great? Because we know West right now is struggling. Um, if Parker Varney has an amazing model um, in terms of how they're teaching students and uh, combining the grade levels, why aren't we doing that in other schools? This mayor has had eight years to make these decisions, and he has not. And in these eight years, we have seen our kids continue to struggle and our test scores decrease. So we need a mayor in Manchester who's going to work with the school board and with the superintendent to do what's right for the students of Manchester, not to do what's right so that he has a little checkbox next to something that he's accomplished. We have to be 100% focused on student achievement and making sure every student in Manchester receives the same opportunity to succeed. Mr. Mayor, perception versus reality in this. There you go again, Joyce. You know, I can tell you that Amy Allen was just uh, the other night voted in as the assistant superintendent of elementary schools. She happens to be the principal at Parker Varney. So she's going to bring forward those ideas and the creations that she had at Parker Varney to make those students absolutely excited about learning. So there's, there are things that we're doing in the city of Manchester, and I know that, you know, there are accomplishments that we can talk about and things that we want to do. But I look at the students. If you were at McLaughlin yesterday and heard the testimonials from the kids that were in the STEAM Ahead program, you would act actually be blown away because they love the STEAM Ahead program at McLaughlin. And is it working throughout the city? West is working. Can we move it to other schools? Yes, we should. And those are things that we should be working on. I can't tell you when they're going to happen. Superintendent of Schools understands that the programs we have right now at West and McLaughlin and MST are great programs, and he wants to replicate them across this great city. So no doubt we have great staff in the city. Um, I've said that. We have very hardworking administrators in our school district as well as teachers. But we're here to talk about the mayor of Manchester and the opportunity that the mayor of Manchester has within our community. And this mayor has had eight years to look at what works and what doesn't work in our school district and has not made significant changes. I did speak with a parent of a child at McLaughlin two days ago, and they were raving about the STEAM program at McLaughlin. But why don't we have that at Hillside and Parkside and Southside if it's so successful? Every child in this district should have the same opportunity, um, but, but that doesn't exist today. Uh, the opportunities are based on the neighborhoods you live in, and that's not right. Well, I can only say that uh, I meet with the kids on a regular basis in the schools here in Manchester. Talk to the teachers, and they tell us that we've got great programs and great things are happening. So I can only tell you that when you listen to the testimonials of an awful lot of students at McLaughlin and the testimonials of the students at West on the STEAM Ahead program, and when you go in and visit the robotics competition in the elementary schools in the fourth grade, and talk to those kids and ask them what's the first thing that they, what's the thing that they're learning most? And they tell you teamwork. And the children that uh, weren't at the top of the class when it came to math and reading really are striving well when it comes to the robotics competition in their schools. So I can tell you great things are happening in a lot of our schools, in most of our schools, and in every school in a different way. Smith Road has a great reading program. I can tell you that uh, what's happening in our schools is great, and the students in Manchester enjoy their education. When students graduate, hopefully they go on to become part of the workforce, and workforce is currently one of, if not the top, concerns of the business community. Uh, Mr. Mayor, in a fifth term, what steps would you take to ensure Manchester can better attract and retain young professionals? Well, I think that it's uh, important to understand that uh, when you see the, the difference of apartments that are happening in our city, the, the micro minis and the one bedrooms to attract the millennials. That's what's uh, happening in the city. That's where they want to be. They want to be in a 300 square foot apartment with a Murphy bed uh, so that they can get uh, around as quickly as they can. And I think that you will see those changes in the city happening. There's another one that's happening right at Ted Herbert's. Uh, there are 30 apartments that are going in there. So people and developers have a great faith in the city of Manchester. They understand what the needs of our community are, 
and they're coming forward with those needs and people are filling them. And that's what's gonna attract and keep Manchester vibrant as it is downtown so that millennials can go down and see Elm Street and you know, certainly have an opportunity because we brought Market Basket to Manchester many years ago. And they have a place to go shop and not have to worry about having to take a bus or drive their car. So I can tell you that great things happen in this city and they happen every single day and they will continue to happen in the future. Ms. Craig on workforce development. Thank you. I think the mayor of Manchester has a great opportunity to be proactive here. Uh, one of the things that I did early on in the campaign is I visited every ward in the city and I talked to residents at their homes, in their businesses. We had round table at uh, CMC. I went into barber shops and talked to young folks. And one thing that was very clear to me is there's a disconnect between job opportunities in Manchester and young people. And the mayor of Manchester has a great opportunity to connect those two things. Uh, one of the things that I've suggested in my plan is to implement um, a mayor's advisory board in terms of helping uh, provide internships or job share um, opportunities for kids in school um, and coordinating that with a number of the businesses in the community. We can also do that for folks that have uh, graduated as well. Uh, we have uh, CMC, we have a mentoring program at the Radisson. Uh, when I talked to those, uh, talked about those things with young adults who were looking for jobs, they were surprised to hear that those opportunities existed in Manchester. So again, I think that the mayor of Manchester has a great opportunity to communicate with our community and be the go-between uh, in terms of what opportunities are in the city and making sure that young adults know about them and can take advantage of those. I've just worked with Dr. Vargas uh, so that we could get a grant for $300,000. Uh, that was with the help of CMC and uh, a lot of other folks. We're going to be instituting a program at West High School that students will be able to go to CMC and get an internship. 20, 20 students. I think a lot of great things that we've uh, discussed with other owners of businesses in that near area where students from West can go to and get internships and be ready on day one for the workforce. I think that's what's important. And if you can get them in that program and getting them ready, that's going to be something that's going to be beneficial to our community and to our city. I think it's important too, that's why I just mentioned it. Um, I think it has to go beyond West High School and address every high school student in Manchester and every young adult in our city. And again, um, it's taken this mayor eight years to get that done, where I am saying I'm gonna start and do that right away. We need to address this workforce issue. We need to make sure young adults get the jobs that are available to them in our city and know about them. We know that when people get jobs, they feel better about themselves and then they become uh, participating, they participate in the community. We want to lift this community up, and the mayor of Manchester has a huge opportunity to do that by communicating with uh, folks that are looking for jobs about the opportunities available. I guess the easy question, Joyce, is to ask you, you were an alderman for six years. Six of my eight years, you were an alderman. Why didn't you bring any of these ideas that you've been talking about forward as you were an alderman? You had that opportunity, but you didn't do it. Six years as an alderman, and none of those ideas came forward. You had eight years as an alderman and eight years as a mayor, and none of these have come forward. Um, it has not been easy, and I can tell you that others in this room who have served with you, you know, we have to work very hard to ensure that just the city services are kept up to date. So moving beyond that was a challenge. But you as the mayor have the opportunity, and that's honestly why I'm running for mayor. An alderman doesn't have the same opportunities or leverage as a mayor of Manchester does. It's not so easy as an alderman to go out and build relationships with companies and say, we'll work with you when they know that they're going to have to go deal with Ted Gatsis in the corner office. So that's why I'm running for mayor. We have a huge opportunity to change what's going on in our city and to make it easier for folks to get jobs and to work collaboratively together. We do have a question now about leadership. It's an interesting segue there. Now, as building consensus is obviously key to making progress when working with the board of 14 aldermen. How would you describe your personal leadership style and how you work with different stakeholders to get things done? And the question goes to Ms. Craig. Thank you. Um, I have a collaborative uh, working style. Um, I like to work with people. I like to hear what their ideas are, uh, to bounce them off of uh, each other. Um, many of the my um, former aldermen uh, that I've worked with are here today, and I know that they would uh, 
say the same thing. I think it's very important that um, from a leadership perspective, you do understand what's going on in the bottom floor, which is something that I've talked about in terms of going on the ride along. So you, you understand the specifics of going what's going on in the city so you can better develop policies to address the challenges and the opportunities that we have. So collaboration, working together with people, truly understanding what's going on in our community and within the city um, is something that I would look forward to doing. Well, I, you know, I keep hearing about uh, how we have mismanagement in this city. My first year, we renegotiated a contract with Verizon Wireless and Arena to save the taxpayers of this city $24 million over the term of that contract. We brought forward a municipal contract that changed the way that people that, uh, were doing work at the city level and making it safe for them. We did that project and it was on time and under budget. So when I look at things and get things done, that's what's important. We brought the School of Technology forward as the only full-time four-year four high school in the state of New Hampshire. We brought, this, brought the STEAM Ahead program together. I went out and raised dollars for students so that they could get scholarships. So those are the things that as we sit at the table, and again, you know, there was a, a, a plan that came forth just two weeks ago about a $5.5 million solar array. And that would save the taxpayers of Manchester $5.5 million. Not a million, as everybody wanted to do two years ago. That was just not right for the city of Manchester. So I talk with people and I get deals done. That's what's most important, to making sure that the citizens and the taxpayers of this great city are protected. So what we heard a lot there was I. I, I, I. The mayor of Manchester is not for himself or herself. The mayor of Manchester is here to serve the people of Manchester. And regarding the solar array, uh, we were here two years ago, uh, and we talked about the solar array. Uh, there was an opportunity to put a solar array up on the landfill. We had a grant that would have paid for it. It would have uh, generated over a million dollars in savings. The mayor killed that when it went to the executive board. And we, we were standing here two years ago. Mayor Gatz has said, I have a plan with Solar City right out right in Manchester, and that's leadership. Well, guess what? Three weeks before the election, we had heard nothing about so, uh, Solar City, and all of a sudden, we heard about a solar array plan. There are two components to the plan, and the mayor is really being very misleading. The part that talks about what's going on in the landfill is pretty much the same savings that we would have uh, received if we had put it in place two and a half years ago, because there was a grant that would have paid for uh, the, the, um, the, the solar array. And so you can't discount that. We've missed opportunities to save energy costs in this city because we didn't take advantage of that opportunity. In addition, the program that's being discussed right now is talking about three megawatts of solar, um, and again, would provide the same savings where the one that we talked about three years ago was one megawatt. That's what the state um, approves right now. They, they're not approving three yet. And I know I'm sort of getting into the weeds, but what came before you, the community, and what hasn't been presented online, no one's seen the proposal, has been um, very misleading and not upfront. And I think it's the wrong approach that the mayor of Manchester should be doing. Well, Joyce, you know, I know that uh, you presented a plan when you were a school board member. You called it great. And it was about taxing seniors. It was ta about increasing taxes on schools, it was increasing uh, taxes, and you called it great, but it wasn't your plan. It was ideas that other people brought forward to you. Well, you know, I, there are people that bring ideas to me, and if I don't believe in them, I'm not gonna present them. So, you know, you have a plan that you brought forward that did an awful lot of things. Talked about a, a sales tax, talked about a, a, a tax at the airport at the time. Those are things you brought forward as a school board member, and I would never bring any of those forward because I don't believe that those are make, they make sense for the citizens of Manchester. I'm not surprised that you would bring ideas forward because we have seen very little come forward from you. But what you're saying is inaccurate and extremely misleading. At a time when you presented a budget with a 4.7% tax increase in 2008 that was approved, we paid for a 4.7%. 7% tax increase that Mayor Gatz has penned and was approved, higher taxes. I went out to the community and asked for ways that they could suggest the city save money and generate revenue. 
and then I turned around and provided all of those ideas back to the school board. Not as a plan, but as ideas that came forward from the community. And you know, and I've said time and time again, that I don't agree with any of those taxes or um, fees that you've mentioned time and time again, but you are continuing to, to mislead the community because you're afraid to stand by your own record. No, Joyce, I'm asking you that when you brought them forward, you said they were great plans in your own words. So I can tell you that people in Manchester are concerned. If you didn't think there were great plans then, why did you bring them forward? You think they're, they're not great plans today because you're running for mayor. And that's uh, the final no, response please. to this question. We're going to stay on the topic. I, I, I just would like to clarify because something he said is not true. I did not say they were great plans. I did not say it was a plan at all. I said they were great ideas. And as if there are any parents in this room, you'll understand that when someone comes forward with an idea, the worst thing that you can do is say it's a bad idea. I presented five pages of I ideas Bobby back. I told Bobby O'Sullivan his 30 Excuse me, I was speaking. Day Hold on, was a bad, we just, bad plan. We'll get to the next question and we'll make the question about taxes. How about that? And the question goes to Mayor Gatzis. Balancing the need for quality city services with fair taxes is always a challenge. What is your approach to striking this balance when, bud balance when budgeting for the city, and how do you approach the city's tax cap? Well, there's no question that I respect the tax cap, and I would veto any budget that comes forward that's over the tax cap. The people in Manchester voted for that tax cap, and they brought it forward. I think it's important that we understand that, and we create budgets that, are in, that taxpayers can live by. Right now, taxpayers in this city, even though we have a booming economy, there are still people that are living from one paycheck to the next and having a very difficult time. So I can tell you that when I present a budget, you have, by law, you must present a tax cap budget as the mayor. But coming forward, if anybody comes forward with a budget that is over the tax cap, I will veto that budget. Thank you. I would present a responsible budget under the tax cap as well. It is the law of the city, and I agree with that law, and it's something that I would do. In addition to that, though, I would also start heading up to Concord because we in Manchester have seen significant downshifting from the state. And the mayor of Manchester has a great opportunity, uh, being the largest city in the state, to get all of the mayors in uh, the municipalities together and go to Concord and talk about that impact that that has had on our community. We need to start looking at where our expenses are. We've seen a drastic in increase in special education costs. Why is that happening? We need to address these major issues in addition to presenting a budget under the tax cap. Um, the mayor talked about vetoing a budget uh, for anyone who presents something over the tax cap. And I just want to clarify the rules here. The only way that a budget can be um, approved that is over the tax cap is when 10 aldermen approve that budget. And at that point in time, it's veto proof. So again, he's misleading the public. It, you know, a budget that overrides the tax cap has to have 10 aldermen supporting it. It's veto proof. So the important thing here, the message I want you to get, because again, the Mayor Gassis continues to mislead you on this, I commit to presenting a budget under the tax cap for, the Ma for Manchester. I've been the loudest advocate in Concord about the downshifting to the city of Manchester and other communities. In one year, we saw a $4 million downshift. In another year, we saw another five. That's just on the city side. I can tell you that I've advocated for that. We put in full day kindergarten when nobody else was doing it. We did it on our dollar because I thought that was the right thing to do in the city of Manchester. We did that by living within our means. I vetoed two contracts. I guess Joyce Craig's got to tell us whether she would veto a contract that takes us over the tax cap. That's the easy question. And I said that there'd be layoffs if we voted for the teacher's contract, and that's what happened. So I can tell you that uh, just sitting there and saying that you're going to present a budget that's by the tax cap, you have to do it by law. The thing is to be seen is how do you do responsible spending so that at the city level, taxpayers are respected. It's great. You have the final response on this topic. Thank you. Um, you know, Mayor of Manchester is a critical position, has an opportunity to really turn around where our city is, is right now. Um, this mayor, when he talks about negotiations, put forward a contract uh, that hadn't been properly negotiated 
and uh, got it on the agenda, and it passed when he was running for governor. He took his eye off the ball, and it passed. We had another contract that was coming into play, and they pulled it away because they got a, this union got a better deal. As mayor, it's so critical that you communicate with employees and with unions in this city, that you participate in the negotiations. You don't quit when the going gets tough like this mayor did two years ago. That we follow the rules and work through the, negotiation, the negotiator for every contract that's coming through. And that we are transparent, that every contract is put online in a special place so that people can see the contracts before they're approved. And that's not happening today. We had a contract by the police support staff that I brought forward three years ago. It was a contract that was going to take Jagger Decker to 1.5% per step for all new employees, remove the five-year step. Uh, they supported it. I supported it. We had a tentative agreement. But, the, but Joyce Craig at the full board didn't think that was a good enough deal and the mayor shouldn't be negotiating contracts. So I stepped out because I thought we had a great deal with the police support staff uh, bringing that forward, and I thought that it was, should have been passed. 15 seconds. Thank you. A true leader doesn't quit when the going gets tough. This is management 101. You don't quit. You can't quit. You've been elected to do the job. Do the job. Speaking of the going getting tough, we get to our last question here, and uh, we'll take things in a slightly different direction, but we've discussed leadership style. Um, there's also service, and uh, Manchester's a hardworking city, a tough city. What adversity have you faced in your own lives that helps inform your leadership style? And this question goes first to Ms. Craig. That's a great question. Um, I guess I think back to uh, my time uh, as a young adult uh, looking for a job um, and knowing that I wanted to get into the advertising agency uh, business and the only way I could do that was to get a job answering telephones. And so I did that, I took that with a college degree and I worked my way up uh, to be a marketing director. And uh, the way that um, advertising agencies work, you get clients, you lose clients, there are layoffs. And I was laid off and I was forced to um, you know, collect unemployment and to live paycheck to paycheck. So I really understand when people are talking about hardship and not having a job and the challenges of finding a new job when you have rent to pay and a car payment and so forth. So that's really impacted me and um, how I address problems and understand the challenges in Manchester. Mr. Mayor, the adversity you faced in your life that has informed your leadership style. Well, I lost my dad when I was 29. He had great vision and talked great things about the city of Manchester and always was there to help students. I look back now and think of him on a regular basis. The things that he taught me, how to respect people, the things that I should do in life to give back. That's why I'm here, because I'm giving back to this community that was so good to myself and my family. I can tell you that his leadership with my brother and myself was incredible. Each of us Every time we see each other, we talk about it. That's an adversity that I had to face. At 29, it wasn't easy, because I'd love to have him here today to enjoy the successes that I've had as mayor of this great city, because he would say, son, I'm proud of you. We have moved now to our closing remarks. And again, the order of opening and closing remarks was determined earlier with a coin flip. Each candidate will have two minutes, and the first closing statement will be delivered by Ms. Craig. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Mike, the Chamber, and all of you for being here this morning. I think it's quite evident that you heard stark differences between uh, Mayor Ted Gatsis and myself, how we approach issues, and how we would approach uh, being a mayor in this city. I can tell you that if I were the leader of the city, the fire chief would not have to go to the press in order to keep a fire station open. We would work it out. And the police chief would not have to go to the AG in order to ensure that domestic violence cases are being prosecuted in the city of Manchester. We would have worked it out. We need a mayor of Manchester who understands the challenges that we're facing and who has the leadership, vision, energy, and management skills to take advantage of the opportunities and potential that Manchester has and to move Manchester forward. So again, I thank you for being here and for listening, and I ask for your vote on November 7th. Mayor Gatsis, you have two minutes for a closing statement. 
There are distinct differences, and I want to thank the Chamber for putting on this event to allow you folks the opportunity to hear those differences. Ted Gatsis is a tough guy. As a leader, sometimes you have to stand alone. I understand that. But the things that I believe, I believe in the city of Manchester, and I love this city. And I will never put this city down, ever. We are just starting to see the great, great growth that we have in this community. We will continue it educationally. We will in, in, continue it infrastructurally. And most importantly, we're going to fight to keep taxes low because I believe that the taxpayers of this great city, their dollars are better spent in their own pocket than in ours. So I will veto any budget that comes forward that's over the tax cap. There are distinct differences. I love this city and I will always talk positive about it. Is there room for improvement? Sure there is. But we will find that improvement as we continue down this road and make Manchester even a greater city. We have a 12-point plan that we brought forward. The 12-point plan for 12 wards to make Manchester a stronger city. And we will continue doing that. And I ask for your vote on November 7th. Thank you and God bless. And let's give one final round of applause to our candidates, Ms. Craig and Mayor Gatsby. In closing, we do want to thank some sponsors here. The premier sponsor, Bellwether Community Credit Union, our corporate sponsors, Comcast, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, and the Manchester Boston Regional Airport. Thank you, of course, to the Puritan Conference and Event Center for hosting. And again, in closing, let's thank the candidates and thank you so many in the community for your attendance here today. Have a great morning, everyone.